What y'all know about it? It's your girl KDZ, baby. You already know what's up. Y'all saw the title. I'm going to be reacting to The Hangout, episode one. Yeah, y'all know that I've been taking these episodes real slow, okay? I've been, I've been, it's been taking me a minute. But I have episode one to get through, which is this one. And then I'm also going to react to The Hangout, episode six, um, right after. So stay tuned for that. I'm so happy for, uh, Jeffrey, I'm glad she got her own little show. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was lit. The show was actually really good. Like, I really enjoyed it a lot. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about uh, All American Homecoming. But, yeah. All right. So, I'm excited to see what they're talking about. This is with Daniel and Michael. So, let's see what they talk about. It's my first time reacting to um, the hangout with, like, boys and only So here's what I want to know. Okay. Yes, you before All American is like your second. It's my second role ever. Second ever acting job ever. And Damn. you were in college. Yeah. Pre med, correct. Which is what? Okay, so technically, basically, I was in college. I was a biology major. Okay. In the pre med field, the pre med uh, what is category? Whatever. So okay. My courses were all science, all math. Yeah. Um, basically focusing on the body, focusing on the anatomy of you and me, and what makes us the way we are, okay, how we act, like and stuff. Yeah, it was very yeah. cool. It's like psychology, and it's, and that was amazing. Yeah, okay. I loved it. So what happened? <laughs> <laughs> why, why? No, I mean, um, so basically, you know, I, I entered college. I had a broken foot, so I was running track. Mm -hmm. I had a broken foot going into college, which is so dang. Um, but I had the ability to kind of. I've never broken and anything, and so I have no idea how that feels, but. Surgery and set me back even further. So from there, um, I, I wasn't running. I was focusing on school, but I was kind of bored at the same time. He looked like, like he'd be a runner. With, like girl for sure. That's always, there's always, there's always a girl involved, right? Whenever right? there's a big life change in someone's life, mm -hmm. there's always a man or woman in the shadows. Right. right. Lurking. Yeah. Lurking, well, lurking, lurking in the shadows. It's facts, like, though. It's yes, facts. It's okay. okay. Yeah, no, so I got broken up with that. I was like, in this, I was sad. I was, you know, whatever. She was, also, she was at the same college. No, 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 no. It was a long distance relationship. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, okay. Those are brutal. Yeah, mm. very good track no, they don't. No, they don't. Long distance. That reminds me. Hey, it's kind of crazy how he actually had a long distance relationship. So he had already experienced that stuff that he had to do in All American. Because him, he and Simone had a long distance relationship for a little minute. So he could relate to that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of cool. I don't <laughs> so like a phone. And okay. um and so but in my head I was like I don't want any of my friends to do this. And so I started making silly videos to kind of cheer myself up, but not only not only cheer myself up, but to also cheer up anybody else who might have been going through what I was going through. Oh whether it was a breakup or whether it was just like, Oh, I'm having a bad day. So I started making silly videos on Snapchat. Wow, so Snapchat okay. went to Instagram, then I started doing YouTube videos, all that. Those have all since been removed, so you can't find them anywhere. Don't try to find them. We're gonna find them. Um, right. um, so basically, from that, my then my that sucks, to man. I bet there's a video yeah. somewhere. Do you have a tattoo? I don't have a tattoo. Oh no, no, no! no. I, I don't have a tattoo. No, no, okay. no. So my mom was like, "Before you get a tattoo, I want you to look into modeling." And I was like, mm -hmm. "Okay." Yeah. And um, he so definitely has a modeling face. Like, like my senior photos. I'm not sure if you guys do that. Do you guys have senior pics? I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't remember. I remember taking pictures in like. Prime what you would call elementary school, but I don't know. Not like school pictures. Oh, right. This is like pictures that you hire a photographer and they Oh, take no. Oh, no. Uh, you are perfect. Yeah, we're crazy. Okay. <laughs> we're crazy. <laughs> I know. 
And um, so my mom took those and into a few agencies. Some of them bought back, and then I just started kind of doing small modeling jobs. But I was still tied to the NCAA. And so oh, for sure. It, for sure. Where until just recently, the NCAA was very, very stingy about allowing people to do basically anything to make any sort of money. That, oh, that's just changing. Right? And that just changed like last week, which is also amazing. Um, so I was able to do some modeling things, but I wasn't able to do anything in athleisure or, or athletic because mm -hmm. they were like, the NCAA is like, oh, well, technically because of your, you're being an athlete, we can't do that because there is a clash. So I left school because I started getting more modeling jobs, more modeling jobs, and um, I left school, went home, was taking online classes. For what period? Why no, I switched because okay. I was like, all right, well, if I'm not going to be at the university, I'm going to switch and have a business. So when you left, you still had were thinking about acting? No. Oh, I was only thinking oh. about modeling, and uh, uh, I just needed a change of pace. So you, so you, because mean, you were so uh, confident in your looks. <laughs> Not for no. real. No, 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 nah, no, no, no. he know he confident in his looks no, for sure. Stop playing. I'm so sexy that I'm gonna leave education. I didn't leave. <laughs> I, no, I, that, that was in the back of my head. No, right. uh, I didn't leave and I didn't leave college with with the thought of being I'm gonna leave because I know mine's gonna take off. Yeah, that wasn't my thought at all. It was more so Indiana State where I went. I had this association of terror because not terror. That's a bad word. But like um um negative thoughts because of my foot being broken oh, and not right. being able to get yeah, So yeah. I wanted to get out of it. And then at the same time, right before, I guess my, my breaking point was my track coach, who I adored and brought me in and yeah. um, kind of gave me a leg to stand on. And even though the other coaches didn't really necessarily appreciate me, yeah. um, because I wasn't producing them any because of my foot, he had passed away from a stroke. Okay. And so that was my breaking point. And I was like, all right, right I'm going to go home, right. regroup. I'm going to focus on this while I'm also taking classes. And so I did that. And then um, they started to pick up. I started getting commercials. I started getting more, you know, Nike and finish line and stuff like that. And then my agents, who I then, I, I signed with a new agency in Indianapolis, and they, um, they started pushing acting on me. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And because um, I, I only knew how to create my own characters in my head. Man, I think it's really interesting to get to know like every actor's story, you know, like like what made them start acting, whether like they started when they were young because of their parents or like meaning like their parents pushed them to do it or you know, you know what I'm saying? Started them out really young or something. And then there's some people that just kind of grew up a little bit, did some theater stuff, kind of liked it, but then me I was just watching TV one day. I think I was like 11 years old. I don't even remember. I was like 11 or 12. So I remember I graduated from the action classes when I was 13. So yeah, um, I was just watching TV one day and then I was just like re-saying re like the words they were saying, like in like an acting way, you know? I was just like, this, that would be really cool to be on TV, you know? So then I just was looking up agencies, places I could do it, you know, and find out how, like, I can start acting and be on a TV, you know what I'm saying? So I, I did uh, John Casablanca, so you guys probably heard of it. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, just look it up if you haven't. But they're pretty cool. They're legit, you know. I'm out here in Dallas. Uh, I'm still technically, that's my, my mother agency. But anyway, let's continue. Yeah, five minutes in. Bye. <laughs> Right. What are you, what are you, what are these? Were you still doing the, uh, the YouTube videos? Yeah, I was, oh, okay. I was still okay. doing the YouTube videos at this point. I was still vlogging. Okay. Jeez, and, you know, I'm knocking out over, boy. And then I eventually went down to Louisville, got a look at an acting coach, mm -hmm. and kind of started to hone my craft, if you will. It's very pretentious, love that. I know. <laughs> it's very actor. -y. I love it. <laughs> and, um, and basically from there, um, I remember getting an audition for Empire. Uh, yeah. mm. So Empire had the MG, but what was the name? He looked like he could be an Empire. I feel like it was like handsome guy, handsome dude, handsome, handsome dude. dude. Mm -hmm. That was my very first role handsome ever, dude. and uh, it was on Chicago. I remember. <laughs> and, uh, basically, from there, my manager who I have now saw that the episode of Empire, the episode of Empire, okay. and from that, my three lines, which I guess were really the muscle and the riveting. He, yeah. he he contacted my agent, wanted me to come out, and so I did. Came out in January and to LA. To LA. So I came out for pilot season, the the season that the All American guys created. 2018. No, yeah, January of 2018. Yeah. Really? 
when did we start filming? Yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. January 2018. January 15th, 2018. Wow. And then um, wow. I auditioned for Jordan on Valentine's Day. Aww. Oh, mm, nah, Valentine's Day? Day? Okay, wow. And then Is this the, the, the movie I'm thinking of? After we that movie pilot, was funny. You went home. Yep, you went home. I went yep. home. And I, just, I went back to working my day job. As a lifeguard. As a lifeguard. Yeah. Correct. Which was honestly cool. Yeah, it was that's cool. It was amazing. You know, I loved that. But I missed that job. What were you doing? What you do when you went home? I mean, no, no. That, at that point, because I've been acting for a few years, I meant like, you know, acts have their, those kind of um, survival jobs. Right. Of like stuff. So while I was training to pay for theater school, I was working in like the British equivalent of, uh, I guess, it's Starbucks. Like, oh. It's like mm. uh, those, that kind of, those kind of home goods. Store. Let's hear the store name. It's called Argus. 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 With a T at the end? A R G O S. A R A what? R G O S. Argus. Yeah. Okay. Which is like the equivalent of right. hard goods. You want the hard goods? Or so I was like, cashier. Just, no, I never learned how to be a cashier. <laughs> 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 I never learned how to Maybe they didn't trust me with the money. I don't know. But they, yeah, they never. I never learned how to be I just learned how to. Um, they call it ticking, where you get the ticket, you go and find the ticket. Will tell you where the the thing was in the warehouse. Mm-hmm. You go and get it. You know, there's a microwave, whatever. And then usually I was upstairs with all like the big stuff, and then I have to have to pay about. But that's how where I learned my hundred bucks. So like, cause it was just me up there, mm-hmm. usually on weekends. You just have just. I would just talk to myself, cause I'd be like training Monday to Friday in the week in theater. Wow. So while I'm at the weekends, I'd be learning lines for microwaves down the stairs. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's basically. And so this this is all brand new. This is all hundred percent brand new. And you know? then okay. So when you got the when you, when we got picked up. Yes. For uh, May eleventh, which was know? which was by the way, which in my mind whenever this happened, I was kind of like half like f u, but also <laughs> like. Excited because we got picked up on May 11th, which was the birthday of the girl who <gasps> broke my heart. Yeah, like, oh, my she... <laughs> the girl who broke your heart. That's tough. So it was really exciting for me, but I was also like, you know, <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, though. <laughs> this is for you. Um, That's no, funny, I, mean, I wish her well. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well without her. It's not even salty because it was her birthday. I learned how to drive because of. Uh, really, they got picked up. Please, what? Because I, <laughs> I had broken up with uh, me and my girl. We had, uh, my ex girl. We had we broken up, and I, I, I started learning to drive at like 17. But then I moved to London. London's like New York. You don't really have to drive to New York. Wait, 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 wait. You started learning to drive at 17. Was that late or early? That was that was kind of on time. That's usually around the time. Okay, I'm not learning in the UK. It's kind of 16, 17. Okay. But then when I moved to London to go to theater school, I kind of stuck because London, you don't really need, London's like New York. You don't really need to right. drive. Okay? We, we need to drive sometimes. And so, and I was like really into my training, so I kind of put it all on hold until like 23, 24. After I finished theater school, I lived in London permanently. Um, and then that, you know, when you, Break up. You, a lot of people they want to drive and listen to music. Yeah, well, it wasn't even that. A lot of people just like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my shit together and I'm gonna do this and do all this. So I wanted to like do something and be active and just get out of the house. So I booked like ten lessons, uh-huh. a clock of ten lessons, <laughs> just as a way to get me out of the house. And so yeah, that's how I managed to drive. It was sort of like a, it was like a therapy. Yeah, and it was kind of my version of FU because I was like. If we ever meet again, you're gonna, I'm gonna, gonna pull be, up in my car. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm gonna be a better person some in some way. So I was going to the gym hard. I was, and you know what I mean. And so I was, yeah. They just, I feel like that always happens. This is such a bro like, talk, bro. Like, yeah, like this <laughs> is literally so. Okay, so typical, it's right? This is how I would expect guys to talk. As far as I know, you told me you were a big basketball player. I mean, I wasn't like amazing. I'm not the one. LeBron James from no, London. No, right? no, 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 no. Let's not let that get out. Let's not let that get out. Um, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was on the basketball team. I was very much kind of uh, into sports. We did like athletics and 
I was on the basketball team and my mm. father's a fitness coach. Mm. And so okay. in okay. my mind I was always gonna leave school, go to university and study like sports science or physiotherapy mm. or something like that. Um with uh, some okay. kind of you know, a personal trainer or a physiotherapist or something like that. And then um, but I also play basketball and I could also like dance a little bit, I did a little bit of like rock dancing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And every two years my high school did a show. They did like a it was usually a musical, sometimes like a talent show, sometimes different things. And for this particular one, um, they wanted the the teacher, who I'm still in touch with to this day, basically forced me to be in the show, the school show. Right. Because um, they and how they how did they force so we're nice drama kids who, yeah, who were, yeah. Who yeah. Who never touched mm-hmm. the basketball in their life so she asked a bunch of us and a few of us went down and I think like 10 of us from the basketball team like went down to rehearsals and, and like, were you hesitant or did you really yeah, you know, I, was, I was like this is I was like no way but mm-hmm. you know it's like that pack mentality like alright we'll all go right. and we'll, we'll check you out and we all got down there and five of us was like forget this they went right back to the basketball court the other five was like because that was all right. Full disclosure. Yeah, there, was a ton of, there was a ton of girls in there, right? And like there were like dancers and like theater kids and stuff. It was like, okay, let's check it out. And so we stayed for like a couple of weeks, but then we were always like, we all got kind of bored and were like, ah, oh, this yeah, this is gonna pass. Soon. Let's go back to the room. We're missing basketball, we're missing practice. Um, and just before I was gonna leave, she came up to me, and handed me a script, which I, I, I don't mm. think I'd ever seen a script before. She's like, I want you to learn this because I want you to audition for one of the lead, lead roles. I was like, oh wait. I was like, I'm not an actor. I was like, you told me I'd just be in the background dancing and spinning mm-hmm. the ball out my paper and doing all that. Mm-hmm. Right? And she was like, no, I've been watching you these last couple of weeks. I think there's, there's something now when I, I feel like you need to be in this part. And because, you know, she was such a, she was she was one of those good teachers. You know, you like those teachers that really care about their students, really passionate about their work. And she was very difficult to say no to. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll give it my best shot. Knowing, knowing 100% I'm, I'm not going to do this. And then, but I did. And it ended up being the most fun I've ever had. So what was that process like for you, I guess, to read this script, this, this unidentified object that you've never seen before? It was just, in my head, it was just all, all that mattered was that. So, like, growing up, like, in, in elementary and middle school, I remember it was really easy for me to go for, like, theater roles and stuff, you know? But in high school, I just could never do it. It's just, like, theater isn't exactly my type of acting. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm better with film, you know, film and television and print and stuff like that, not like theater because I don't know. I just can't do it live like that in front of people. I mean, I guess some shows were like that, though, or they did it in front of a live audience. A lot of our favorite, you know, Disney shows, well, not the well, not not Disney. Well, yeah, some of them, yeah, 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 yeah. Original Disney, like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and that's a Raven, right? Ooh, I would have loved to be, bro. I would have loved to be. Anyway, we we get off track. We get off track, bro. Let's just. Get to it. I didn't okay. have no concept of character or how to do. Or I was just like, I'm just gonna do, learn the lines and walk into them, just say them, right. And then whatever happens, happens. And um, yeah, for me, I've got to explain the most important thing, just know your lines and then go with it and see what happens. Um, and yeah, and it ended up being the most fun I've had in school. So the next year I enrolled in her drama class and that's where she introduced me to Shakespeare. And uh, mm. do you love or hate? I love Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love Shakespeare. Word. Because it was like, you know, at first it was confusing. At first I didn't get it and I couldn't understand it. But then I realized how similar it was to rap music and hip hop. Because they follow the same rules. It's like, you know, where you place the stresses and where you, um, uh, you know, the, how you say a line to change the whole meaning of a line. And, right. and I still don't understand story. Shakespeare and stuff. I read that stuff one time and I was like, that was kind of my way into what? So like, like they had me, right? Let me stop talking over them. They had me right when we was reading um, Romeo and Juliet, and like, what was it? I think I read it at like like my ninth grade year, yeah, freshman year. I remember they had me right, like I was really understanding what was going on, and then curve because they started using this, 
you know what I'm saying, that old grammar, you know what I'm saying, like that old stuff, so I was just like, what the, bruh, like, what does that mean, you know what I'm saying, y'all ever had that struggle, bye. Um, that was kind of my way into kind of figuring it out, and then somewhere during that performance, something clicked, and I was like, oh, this, this is what I want to do, whatever this feeling is, I want to feel this all the time, right, and so I just became obsessed from that point, and then I met an actor who actually lives here now. In the UK, who basically mm-hmm. took me on his wing and taught me all about drama school. And then two years later, my first year I auditioned for actors, I didn't get in, I got rejected from all of them. But I tried again. Oh, shit. Sure. Uh, I got into uh, three, picked my favorite one. And then, yeah, I spent the next three or four years of my training. Yeah, it was, um, which is, yeah, drama school in the UK are very strange places. Okay, so we, we, we so have the same thing. I think, yeah. I think sports and sports are kind of. Yeah, sports are kind of say was similar. I think we probably learned the same rules. Yeah, I think. Um, but I couldn't imagine playing. I wonder how much kind of sport, they know, had to like, learn when it came to like just, football just, just, for the show. And our school rivalry. So we had Col- we were Columbus born. We had Columbus East. We had no school rivalry. Our school rivalry for football drew in ten thousand. Okay, okay. For, for and he has a school football school. with him. I, why did I just realize that he had a football with him? That is the pretty, the pretty oh, boy. That is. Oh, whenever I was a junior, yeah, I was a wide receiver. It's just the thing of a pretty boy would do, like. Yeah, and you how old he is? How how seventeen? Yeah, it's my anxiety would have tore my head off. Like there's no. Maybe it's a light skin thing. It's just I like just be just, playing. It's just kind of like an athlete. You block out everything else that's going and all the other million things that are dangling in our faces and yeah. heights and everybody walking around and everyone talking and whatever. Yeah. You just block that out and you run your route and you do your thing. You Because you have a job every time you play. You that's focus. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's what I'm true. saying? And that's so true. That's true. getting into that rhythm, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's so not as terrible. In the show, in, in All American, is the football, is that your favorite part? Or is that, I mean, you're acting all the time, but is... Do you, you, are you more excited when we have those big football days or are you more excited by the big acting scenes where you got the fun parts? That's a good question. I, I, I enjoy getting out there on the field and being kind of spreading my wings and being able to throw the rock and work out. That is exciting, but it's mm. not real. Right. It's not right. real. And, you know, yeah. we're always safe yeah. at every moment. And, and I do miss the, the, uh, the, uh, I guess the opportunity to be hit, as weird as that is. That is Straight. Interesting. Like, you, know, you, know, you know how you like you miss the maybe the aggressiveness of basketball, like playing yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's like that. Yeah. Like I miss the, the ability to like actually run for my life from yeah, these yeah, six yeah. five grown Because we know, um, yeah. Because we know, like they, they can't. They can hit us, but they can't. They're not gonna hurt. Yeah. These dudes are gonna. They, they're always gonna be. You know, they're gonna be taking something right off. They're gonna be going seventy percent, fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like even in yeah, season yeah. one, we have to. We've got to take the actors because they're weak. Yes. <laughs> Even in season one, whenever I took that hit, yeah. I don't remember what episode it was. But I was like, Justin wanted to bring in a stunt. But I was like, no, just let him hit me. Yeah. And, and, um, <laughs> and the hit looked dope. The hit ended up looking dope. But um, I was like, damn. Damn, the hit. I'm going to have to go back so I can I see. I missed the ability to. Because if it was like a legit good like, hit, bro. I want to see that again then. I need to do something to get out of his way. Okay. Yeah. But no, I mean, okay, what do you prefer? Mm-hmm. Being that you've never played well, football, I mean, season one, how did yeah, you... Yeah, never feel? played football? I was, I was, the football was the part I was most obsessed with, because, like, the acting, I, it was, it was my first lead role, mm-hmm. so that was exciting. The season one, I was just getting used to, like, being in every day, being in almost every, every scene, um, but the football, because it was so brand new, I'm one of those people that, if I have to learn something, I want to really learn it. Mm-hmm. So, like, when it was, when they said, oh, you're going to have to learn American football, mm-hmm. like by the end of the show, I want to be able to like really play American football, right? Because that's just my mentality. I don't like that's a good mentality. That's that's good. Um, I want, I, you, know, you know, when they like you get a play and you just like I want to know exactly what it is and just be able to score points. Just mm-hmm. to, I want to get to that point where I, they don't have to show me what it is. I don't need anyone. Yeah, to I'm ready for more All American already, dude. Me, it's just I just know it because I because I watch like you guys and it's like they'll come up and say okay. Like we're gonna run a post corner here. We're gonna do this. 
and you just oh, okay great okay so I'm gonna do this do this do this yeah. so for me it's like they they still gotta show me what that is first <laughs> before I can do it whereas um I'm getting this season I'm getting to the point where I'm like mm-hmm. oh okay all right and she's all right now I'm gonna back into it my fuck your my fuck camera freaking overheated is the way let's keep it let's go I'm going back a little bit, bro. Whereas, um, I'm get, this season, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, post, okay, all right, I know what that is. I can do that. Yeah, right, right, so right. I know what that is. Or a dig, I know what that is. So, and I think it just comes with repetition. With the repetition. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and Scott, our trainer, has actually been great about Scott. Benzie. Shout out to Scott Benzie. Shout out to Scott, Benzie. Scott Benzie. Um, On Friday, it's a football game. Yes, it is. Um, from us airing on television to us hitting Netflix, the difference in your DM. Oh, that's a good question. Interesting I mean, it's question. Definitely, uh, it's definitely more of them, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just, they, yeah, it was just an interesting place, man. Because <laughs> you're going to see everything. For the most part, it's like just people showing up to the show, right? It's people um, saying how much. I got an incredible DM the other day from a man, a young woman who said how, uh, how seeing Spencer's relationship with Coop. Uh, helps helps her heal in terms of her relationship with um, other men. Mm-hmm. You know, I, just, I guess stuff had happened where she um, uh, he, he had made like her like trust in men and like I guess the wrong people in her life uh, difficult. It had made it may had made that difficult. Wow. But seeing um, the kind of Spencer's relationship with the coup and protecting for years, it kind of helps her heal and helps her kind of um, or helps her at least begin the process. Of so those those are my big nice. Those nice. are my ways that like, you get to see the effects that the show has because you know it explores some tough stuff. We do, especially this season. Yeah. So you know if it gets the spark conversation. Oh, of American people, is a great show, y'all. Yeah. Like I really like mess with it. it. Those those are my favorite. Yeah. I would be in something like on American. <laughs> you asked me something in the car on the way here, and I'm gonna ask you that question. Mm-hmm. So my question to you is, have you ever been on a blind, a blind date? date? Yeah. What is the definition of a blind date? I guess it's... Like, I have a girl, I'm going to set you up with a girl. Yeah, or so, it's I, so, so, yeah so it's like me mm-hmm. saying, I have a girl that I think will be perfect for you, I'm going to set you to blind I ain't never been on a blind date, date. y'all, but I'll be young, though, so it's okay. I don't need one. Just <laughs> oh, wow. No, I, I can't say I've ever done that. Um, I don't know if it's in my generation. They really do seem like they have a really good bond, like a good brotherhood type shit. Shows would do that to you. I would. I think anybody would at this point. <laughs> actually, actually, to be honest with you, the girl from the beginning of this podcast. Yes. The story, okay. The heartbreak. She. Yeah. She was through social media. But I didn't. Okay. I have never met this person. Okay. One of my friends had her Snapchat. Okay. And it was like, hey, here's your Snapchat. And I was like, oh yeah, she's cute. I saw her on Instagram. You know, whatever. And I was 
I was happy. I can depend on you know we had a first date. Yep. And so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And then um, in another occasion, it's more recent. Yes. Um, where I traveled. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Um, but <laughs> I think. Do you think social media made dating better or worse? Social media. Probably, man, that's a hard, hard, <laughs> bro, that is hard to answer. Because actually both, like, it has its pros and cons. I feel like it's pretty balanced. It's helped in some ways, and I think it might have made it worse in some ways as well, to be honest. Better for me. <laughs> because I, I'm yeah, best. Young, we kind of yeah, if I see a pretty woman in, in the bar or in a coffee shop, ten times out of ten, I'm not gonna walk. Oh yeah, Mike's never. I've never walked up. Mike's never approached mm-hmm. someone and like asked for that number. Never. You've never done mm-hmm. that. Never yeah, that makes sense too, though. I, I just have you. Have you wanted to? Wanted That's to one of the you benefits of doing it over the phone, social media. Yeah, I'm in this coffee shop. There's so many beautiful women mm-hmm. here. Yeah, you better believe. You best believe I'm gonna go home well, without yeah. saying anything. To yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm most guys do. That's the thing. Like nine times out of ten, you're gonna chicken out. Yeah, which is crazy to me because I've done like theater where I've performed in front of like nine hundred, a thousand plus people. Mm-hmm. And Dang. Just me on stage and I've been like monologuing it out like crazy, and I've been fine. But you, sh- but you're in character. But I'm in character. But you're in a character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, but somehow me walking across a room or a bar or I mean I don't really go to bars, but like across mm-hmm. the store or whatever. Library. I'm not sure. Um, me walking across that to the person and saying whatever the thing is like what do you say what what do i say what okay, i mean i don't know i've, I've had some crazy stuff some guys I feel like bro i do feel that like just walking up to somebody and having to say something like this rehearsed in your head but like also you have to be feeling the emotions and all that so that you can portray it you know to everybody the audience and everything make it look real you know i feel like that would make me laugh like just walking up to somebody just going into like straight just, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all both, this is like a job to y'all. Y'all know what I'm saying? But it's like, I think, it, I think it's just crazy to me. Some stuff, it's like, mon- it's like rehearsing monologues and stuff, they can be, the we're actually pretty fun, but like, they can be tough sure. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, bet, I bet that's probably been done like a thousand times, for sure. Um, but for me, that's more exposing than standing on stage. I think so too. Yeah. Standing on stage in front of a thousand people, and, but it doesn't make any sense as to why that is because you're standing on stage. I can't do it in front of. I mean, well, I probably could, somebody, not but yourself, yeah, to a bunch of strangers. It's just crazy. If you go to a coffee shop, paid to be there, paid paid to stand I couldn't do it in front of people I know. Friends. Like and in a coffee shop, I guess you're still surrounded by strangers, but you're yourself. And I think that's the biggest difference. And also, those strangers aren't interested; they don't care. But if, so if the girl makes a scene, or even if like it's noticeable, but what the chances of mm-hmm. that? Yeah, it's doubt. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. slim. But even if like if I walk up to a girl and say, "Hey, uh, I think you're cute. I'd like to take you out, whatever." Yeah, and she's like, "No." Mm-hmm. Anybody in that surrounding vicinity who can maybe hear that conversation is going to be like, "Oh, this person's not that interesting." Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that to me is terrifying. So is that what stopped you from ever doing that? Yeah, is the fear of rejection. rejection. Fear of rejection. Okay. Fear of rejection. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I hate rejection, bro. I mean, how many times has it worked for you? How many times has it not worked for you? I mean, it's definitely not worked more than more times. And what's that like? I mean, is it as scary as it? No, not as what's in your head. Because mm-hmm. the thing is, to, to to be able to do it and to have a conversation with a stranger anywhere, you're always gonna have at least me, me and my exciting or my demons. Like it's like I'm always gonna have multiple scenarios playing in my head. Yes. Of how bad it could mm-hmm. actually go, and I agree. And yeah, I feel it. I feel what you're talking about. Yeah. All those first, mm-hmm. and then still be like, okay, I'm still gonna do it, even though. And, and but sometimes that wins. Sometimes the stuff in your head is like, you know what, it's not worth it. Yeah. Okay. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's not something I'm. I have a habit of doing. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't do. I don't. I don't do it a lot. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you've never done it though. I've just I, no. I mean, all the girls that I have dated were either my friends, or we all were on the same friend group, or I was like the Snapchat situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so I've never had to. And also, Columbus is a small town of 50,000 people, so everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Or at least you've heard of it. So like, oh, I see so what I'm saying. Like, mm -hmm. So it's easier to avoid. Yeah. I've never actually approached somebody. Even, yeah. even males, even guys, I don't, I don't know what to say. Oh, so it's just a social. It's thing. just it's a so. Just a it's just, it's just a thing. social anxiety right. thing to be like, um, like my manager, my manager at parties would be like, "Hey, let me introduce you to this guy." Okay, what, do you, what am I gonna say? Yeah. Like, Hi, I'm which Michael. Which is like, which is weird because it's like almost half this industry is like networking. Yeah, it's like going to these places and these events and stuff and meeting people and trying to establish some kind of rapport or some kind of relationship. Right. And you know, because that you never know could lead to something. The next thing. Like a job or a, you know a deal or some kind of partnership or something, and so it's if I'm introduced, it's that much easier. But if I was alone in the party, and some yeah, party, it's true. Someone said, "Let's go say hi." Terrified. I, I mean, honestly, I just I would just hide in the back. Yeah, I would. I, yeah. Who do you think on the cast, mm. male and female, would be the best at approaching someone? Mm. They, Thought was attractive to dating. So, oh, <laughs> okay, okay, not the not the like adults, not the grown ups, oh, the kids. Oh. Oh, the kid. I mean, Taylor obviously would win, but yeah, yeah he would hands down. I think he, the kids. I think he could take home any man as well. Um, <laughs> I <agree. laughs> um I, I feel like you know, as soft spoken as this person is, yeah, Greta, Layla, Greta, okay, mm -hmm. Greta, Greta, or Greta. or um. I feel like you could. I feel like I, yeah, Cody I feel, could. I feel like Greta. I think Greta and Cody are the two. I think I don't think Sam would ever approach him. We were talking about this at lunch the other day. I don't know if she would or not. I don't remember. Who do you think? Out of the, the kids cast, I think probably I think probably Greta. Yeah. But I don't know why. And there's something like as soft spoken as she yeah. is. I think that she is confident. Have, though. She's, I, she's I think that, yeah. deceptively confident. I think so. She's like she. Um, she has a very innate confidence. She doesn't wear it on her sleeve, but right. she she's she's very secure in who she is, mm -hmm. and and, and I feel like she'd have no problem like just I engaging with someone she didn't know and make them feel whatever. Yeah, probably right. I think I agree. Fair enough. Who's the worst? Who do you think would be the best besides myself? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. You know who else I think would be good? Hunter. Hunter. Hunter plays JJ. The show, uh, yeah, I can see. He's that. another one that's quietly confident. He's quietly yeah. knows who he is. I think that's one of the most attractive things. When you when I meet someone who's very has a very kind of strong ownership of their self and isn't trying to be anything other than what they are, right. they own it. They they um, are happy with that, enjoy it. Like that's like that's attractive to me. That's mm -hmm. like um, that's one of the most attractive things to be someone who's just for better or for worse. Someone who just like this is who I am, and they're unapologetic with that. Right? Is is uh is very very sexy. Which leads <laughs> on to my next question. <laughs> oh, what did it say? Is it me? I'm almost it's done. Like, what what is what is the most what what is the most attractive thing to you? Are we talking physically or personality? No, it, no, both. Well, okay, physically. <clears throat> Physically, probably the hair or smile, both, bro. Yeah, hair, smile. Personality, goofy or like funny. You know those girls that like funny without even meaning to be funny? <laughs> yeah, like that. And then, I don't know, like, I don't know. Let's see what they said. Physically, because I know all the ladies watching the night too. Mm. Physically, you know this, but it's teeth. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. See, look, smiles. Yeah. Around. I mean, like, smiled like, teeth. Look, look, yeah, it is. yeah. But like, it's just good whenever you first meet somebody, where are you looking? Their eyes and then after their mouth. Whenever they talk. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're right. You know. Yeah. And you know, it's teeth for me first. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I think all eyes are cool. I think that if you have yeah. really cool blue eyes or whatever brown eyes, whatever color. It'd be like the smile teeth, teeth, slash teeth. 
You got a nice pair of the eyes and the hair. Yeah, you know, we're gonna go to <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then um, personality wise, um, somebody who's funny. Without trying to be funny. That's, that's, see, look, that's what I said. Funny without trying to be funny. Look. <laughs> yeah. Without just saying something subtle or throwing out some But my nose itching, bro. Yeah. 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 What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, wipe. I'll wipe. I'll wipe. Yeah, I'll wipe. Yeah. What about you? Um, Major, I'm going to house you going crazy. crazy. I feel like if you don't sort of take yourself seriously and take what you say you know, be kind of goofy and, and stuff that's very um, endearing to me, for sure. And um, physically, I don't know. I know it. Can I say it? Yeah, yeah. please, you say it. Just because I don't. Your walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was, I'm, I'm a sucker for a definitive walk. Which, which I don't get. I know, but it's like, because I remember, it's like, just if someone... So if someone walks with confidence, it, it's gonna get my attention instantly. Okay. In like a very definitive, and you see it, and you know it. Mean, so that will be driving sometimes, okay. and I'm like, she, she, like she's she, gonna walk. She knows how to walk. Say. She yeah. knows how to. I don't know if you like the model walk. At this, it's very, it's different. Everyone's got a different way of how they like carry their body. Mm -hmm. but some women mm -hmm. have it in a way where it's just like it commands your attention. Mm -hmm. I have to show you an example, but uh, yeah, it's does that contradict? Way. Your thought of um, someone being quietly confident, or no? Is it a totally no? Because I think you can, I think you can be quietly confident and still. Because I don't, I don't think when I'm I ain't never heard of that. As an actor, yeah. you in theater school, you're quietly so confident. Afraid to be aware of how you're moving. Like most people, ninety like percent people in regular life aren't really aware of how they're moving. So it's not something you're gonna know, but it's something the world around you is gonna know. Oh, they know is it? <laughs> okay okay so that was the hangout episode one daniel ezra and michael evans so yeah they definitely have this really cool bond this bromance you know what i'm saying i can see them being really really cool like best friends type shit you know what i'm saying so yeah i mess with their vibe it definitely felt like a guy conversation, you know what I'm saying? And just sounding, you know what I'm saying? But I enjoy, like, the questions they ask and, like, the answers. Very wholesome, you know what I'm saying? They, they seem very genuine and wholesome and humble. And they're dope, so, yeah. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Make sure y'all like the video, subscribe, hit that bell so y'all know what I post. All right, y'all. And if y'all do subscribe, you have to hit that bell. You'll see me in the next video. Stay late, y'all. Yeah.